Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and it is Monday, so we are doing breaches of the week. That's right, I missed Sunday. I apologize for that. Just had too much going on to be able to sit down and do the just the due diligence it takes me every week to get this done. So we're a day late, but we are not a dollar short here. And as always, I'd like to thank the following people that sent me breaches last week, and that would be David Walker, Jason Dance, Chris Fellon, Barrett Peterson, and Jacqueline Wolf. As always, it is so, so appreciated. And if you have a breach for me, please let me know, and I will give you a shout out here and on my nationally syndicated radio show when I do that segment. Now, with that, let's get started, because I said we're a day late here, but there was plenty of action last week to talk about. And with that, we're going to start with Saudi Aramco, the largest, or if not one of the largest, uh, uh, oil companies in the world. Apparently, attackers stole about a, a terabyte of proprietary data belonging to Saudi Aramco, and they're offering it for sale on the dark web. Now, this threat actor group is known as Zero X, and basically, they are taking credit. Now, to create traction among prospective buyers, a small sample set of Aramco's blueprints and proprietary documents with redacted personally identifiable information were first posted to forums on June of this year. Now, the group says that the one terabyte dump includes document pertaining uh, documents pertaining to Aramco's refineries located in multiple Saudi Arabian cities, including Yanbu, Jazan, Jeddah, Raz Tanur, Riyadh, and Dahran. Now, some of this data set includes full information on 14,254 of their employees. They have something like 70,000 worldwide. So that means we're talking names, uh, photos, passport copies, email, phone number, resident permits, uh, job, uh, basically uh, permit numbers, job titles, ID numbers, family information, etc. Project specifications as well for systems related to including Electrical and power systems, architectural, engineering, civil construction, uh, management, environmental, machinery, vessels, telecom, etc., etc. Again, massive corporation. Also, internal analysis, reports and agreements, letters, pricing sheets, also network layout, mappings of IP addresses, uh, SCADA points, Wi-Fi access points, IP cameras, and IoT devices. That's obviously a very serious cybersecurity problem as it literally gives a roadmap into their infrastructure that you might be able to exploit. Also, location map and precise coordinates of uh, basically their plants, wells, all that kind of stuff, lists of Aramco clients, along with invoices and contracts, obviously very sensitive stuff. So Saudi Aramco right now has a very serious problem. Hopefully they'll get that cleaned up. Moving on, I want to talk about just an absolutely disgusting data breach, and that would be basically the Florida condo collapse victims. If you recall something like three weeks ago or so, an entire condo just north of Miami collapsed, killing multiple people. It was just shocking to everybody, uh, given that it basically it had been known, I guess, as structurally unsafe for a couple of years, and they had done nothing about this. But somebody is stealing the, identi the identities of essentially the dead victims of this collapse. In Surfside, that's the city, the small city just north of Miami, their mayor, uh, uh, Charles Burkett, told Business Insider that the police will be tracking them down. We hope. Officials have also told the families of the victims basically to check their credit and contact Social Security offices regarding their deceased loved ones. And again, everybody's heart goes out to just that insane, heartbreaking condo collapse. This doesn't make it better. And I really do hope that we find and prosecute these criminals, as I do with all of these data breaches. And with that, let's move on to the Northern Rail Company, which services towns and cities across Northern England. An apparent ransomware attack resulted in about 600 of their self-service ticket machines across their network being taken offline. People were urged to use the mobile app, ticket offices, or the website while they remain disrupted. And obviously they're trying to restore. The attack comes literally two months after 600 northern operated touchscreen tickets machines were installed at 420 locations across the region, obviously centrally managed, obviously hit. Was this Kaseya? Nobody's saying. We'll see what's happening. Moving on. Let's talk about the fraud family because Dutch police have arrested two suspects this week who created and hosted phishing sites for other cybercrime groups as part of an online service they were calling the fraud family. Now, police officers arrested a 24-year-old man from the city of Arnhem, a 15-year-old boy from the town of Loen, and did vect, and I, again, a 
apologize for my pronunciation to any of my Dutch followers. Investigators said um, basically the former developed the phishing sites while the latter had been responsible for selling access to the tools developed by his partner. Now, the police also searched the house of uh, a third suspect, an 18-year-old teen from Hu Javin. I'm hoping, again, I'm pronouncing that right. But his role in the operation has not been publicly detailed. So the fraud family looks like they're being taken out of business. That's a good sign. Hopefully, they will catch them all. Moving on. Let's talk about the U.S. State Department because this is actually really sucks. Scammers are using automated bots and those have forced the State Department to shut down the United States' emergency passport application. Now, here's what's going on. Typically, people in urgent need of a passport for life or death situations can schedule a free appointment through the State Department's website. But scheming criminal opportunists created a computer bot to basically scoop up the appointment so that they could sell those spots to desperate people. Some scammers were charging up to $4,000 for that appointment, according to the San Francisco Gate or SF Gate. To quote one person that was attempted to be extorted by this, and I quote, I posted a few days ago that my sister needed to renew her passport so she could fly out to Egypt ASAP to see our dying at the time, now dead father. This person had the nerve to hit me up asking for $4,000 and took advantage that I was desperate. The State Department therefore shut down that portal 10 p.m. this past Wednesday. And now if you need uh, basically a, uh, a passport in an emergency, you must call the extremely busy National Passport Information Center to schedule their appointment. Some people really just suck. That's all it is. I hope anybody that needs an emergency passport, especially if you're trying to see a dead loved one, or excuse me, a dying loved one, which I hope recovers for you, I hope you're able to get an appointment ASAP. Moving on. Let's talk about German pharmacies. Apparently, all of them, I think. It wasn't specific, but German pharmacies have actually stopped issuing digital COVID-19 vaccination certificates after attackers created passes from fake outlets. And that's according to an industry association in Germany this past Thursday. Obviously, that's a huge blow to Germany's inoculation drive. Now, Germans who have been fully vaccinated are entitled to a certificate, which allows them more freedoms, especially to travel uh, you know, across the EU and other places. Pharmacies and vaccination centers have issued these uh, historically, and the German Pharmacists Association, known as DAV, uh, said that attackers had managed to produce two vaccination certificates by accessing the portal and making up pharmacy owner identities. DAV uh, basically was alerted to this by a local newspaper, Handelsblatt. So here we are. Hopefully uh, they will get that straightened out. Uh, we're going to see a lot of fraud when it comes to passports for COVID-19 and all of that, as some people simply refuse to get pa uh, vaccinated and will simply get the card, obviously an unvaccinated person looking vaccinated with that card. Huge issue in Germany. It's going to be a huge issue worldwide. Moving on. And speaking of worldwide, let's talk about the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Now, most of this article is behind a paywall, but you'll get the gist of this, and I could not find another one. I think this is brand new news because the usernames and passwords of Tokyo 2020 ticket holders and event volunteers were reportedly compromised, but Japanese government officials claim the data leak was not that large. As I get more information, and probably next Sunday, I will be talking about that more in depth, but for right now, that's what we know. Moving on, let's talk about the Florida Department of Economic uh, Opportunity, or DEO. I believe this is the unemployment uh, office of, uh, of Florida. And I quote, malicious actors, end quote, may have stolen personal information such as social security numbers, bank account information, and more in a data breach of basically the unemployment benefit, benefit system, 58,000 Floridians were affected. So if you are in the Sunshine State and need unemployment, you might want to check in. Moving on. This one actually was really surprising to me as well. This has been a week of surprises. So we're going to be talking about GunTrader.UK. That's right, a website for selling weapons, handguns specifically, and rifles in the United Kingdom. I didn't even know this existed. I thought the United States was the only place that really had something this burgeoning. But apparently criminals um, have hacked into the Gumtree style website for buying and selling firearms, making out, uh, making off rather with 111,000 uh, entries in a database containing partial information from a CRM content relation management database product used by gun shops across the United Kingdom. This database contains names, mobile phone numbers, email addresses, user geolocation, 
geolocation data and more, including uh, basically encrypted passwords as well. Geolocation data when it comes to compromises of gun databases, obviously a huge problem is now potential criminals know where the guns are located. I know the UK has some very, very uh, restrictive laws when it comes to firearms, especially compared to here in the United States. Nevertheless, the UK has guns, just like our neighbors to the North Canada have them, obviously more restricted. Now, it's obviously a severe breach of privacy, not only for gun trader, but for its users, which are members of the United Kingdom's licensed firearm community. And God forbid, uh, you know, a criminal is able now to, let's say, wait till you go to work, break in and steal your handgun. A very, very serious issue. Hopefully, guntrader.uk has got that cleaned up. Moving on. Going to give you guys an update on Electa because obviously a lot of healthcare uh, organizations are using them and declaring data breaches for their radiology imaging and all of that. And this week is, or this past week, I should say, is Yale New Haven Health out of Connecticut. So if you go to Yale New Haven Health in Connecticut, heads up to you if you've got especially radiology. Moving on, let's talk about Aging Partners, which is a department of the city of Lincoln, Nebraska, that serves the senior population in the city and the surrounding area. Now, four email accounts at Aging Partner were compromised, leaking more than 46,000 uh, individuals' emails. Now, the affected uh, for the affected 1,513 individuals, data included their names, address, date of birth, phone number, social security number, medical condition, medical information, and more could be uh, basically in the hands of these unknown attackers at this time. So obviously, heads up, if you're a senior citizen using aging partners in and around Lincoln, Nebraska, or you've got, the, you've got relatives that are using aging uh, partners you might want to have them check in as well. Moving on, and finally, and this was actually a bit of a shorter week, and I did my homework too, I'm not sure changing you, we have to give you guys an update on Kaseya. If you recall a few weeks ago, Kaseya basically had a bomb dropping uh, ransomware event. They got hit by Revil, huge problem, thousands of companies hit, uh, and basically Revil went dark. We didn't know if the uh, United States government or intelligence agencies or a conjunction of the United States and, and you know our partners around the globe, and including Europe, Europe, where Revil is based out of, which we know is Russia, uh, if they had anything to do with this, or if it was a Russian government, or if Revil just went dark, decided to pull an exit scam, steal the money, and then set up shop as something else. We're still looking into that. But, but what has come out since that data breach is a decryption key. And so a lot of organizations that, let's say, didn't have good backups or all of that can now get access to a decryption key. But there's a catch. There's an absolute catch. Kaseya, the company, is requiring customers affected on this massive, uh, basically by this massive Revilware ransom attack, they have to sign a non-disclosure agreement in order to get the decryption key. Obviously, this is a move that basically shrouds this hit in further mystery. I don't think they've been that forthcoming. While they were transparent with their MSP partners through the breach, now, if they're having everybody sign NDAs, that's obviously a huge thing. Although decryption key will no doubt bring relief to some victims, you know, many have stated that it's going to have minimal impact because at this point they've already restored from their backups if their MSP was on it and they had solid backups not affected by the Revil hit. Now, a new CNN report published about uh, last Friday revealed that these non-disclosure agreements were there, citing several cybersecurity experts working with the victims of the attack. Now, these news, uh, basically, this uh, the outlet notes that there were agreements that, or rather, I'm sorry, CNN noted that these agreements are not that unusual in the cybersecurity industry but it's obviously going to make it harder to understand how this attack occurred, meaning Kaseya, Kaseya is trying to keep this really close to the chest. We have heard from previous, uh, basically, Kaseya whistleblowers talking to Bloomberg and other outfits that they were playing fast and loose, uh, basically prioritizing sales over software development and security. And so I, I have, I'm willing to speculate that if a full report comes out or they are required to report this to, let's say, the United States Congress, what we may learn is that their internal control systems are very lacking. That is my speculation based off of the evidence of their former employees saying essentially this to major news outlets, uh, essentially off the record for fear of retribution for their job. So obviously this is a huge problem, but Kaseya did say that they basically had a universal decryptor from a trusted third party, and that's all they are saying. And so my other question here, other than this is going to make it harder to figure this out so we uh, we can look at hardening methodology against remote managed monitoring tools like Kaseya and all of its Kaseya's com uh, competitors in that size market, that small to mid-size business market, uh, you know, that's obviously a problem. But my other question is exemptions for breach disclosure laws. 
Now, it wouldn't necessarily affect how and where they got the decryptor key, but if an organization is dis has to disclose a data breach, they have to state, yeah, this is what happened, this is what we know, a third-party supplier, a third-party vendor, aka Kaseya, got his hit. They don't have to go beyond that, so I'm sure, or I would hope, rather, that the language for the NDA basically does not uh, force these companies not to disclose, because that would obviously would be in violation of state and federal law, depending on who the customer is. So I'm hoping Kaseya put that language in there, otherwise they may poten potentially be getting companies into trouble or those companies may not necessarily know that they have this and blindly sign this knowing that they need that decryption key like ASAP. But for some companies, this was a life ending event. We saw that in the news. It was obviously a huge problem. And so here we are. Those were your breaches of the week. Uh, just another interesting week of annoying, annoying breaches overall. And, uh, there you go. Hopefully you weren't affected. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, everyone.